Jesus every day na shagara beru. Double, double, heavenly blessing na him I be receive. Ah, yeah. God in your grace and mercy is always the follow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. God has given me victory. He has given me victory. Oh, yeah.
and he's going to give you a word of motivation, a moment with the master or Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Want to acknowledge our morning's uh, master of ceremonies, our principal, vice principals, our torch, chief torch bearer, Mrs. Manasia Williams. And for those who are the reason why we're here, our scholarship winners from PEP, I really want to say a pleasant morning to you and I want to also extend a warm welcome to you. Mine is a task this morning to share a thought or a few with you. But before I do that, I, I just want to share particularly with the children. I don't want the parents to listen, but the children can hear. I am particularly happy this morning for a couple of reasons. One, I'm seeing some youngsters coming into this school that I probably taught your parents or would have interacted with you when you were but toddlers. Um, for those of you who recognize me as that, I really want to welcome you in this space. You're coming into the Glenmere High School at a critical point. I'm reflecting and I'm remembering that in June of 1983, a particular publication of the Gleaner carried my name. That's 40 years ago. And, and to the date, 35 years ago, I exited Glenmore High School as a fifth former. So as I talk to you today, I want for you to understand that much of what I'm saying to you is born out of my own experience as a student here. And just to cap it off, I'm in my 30th year of being a member of staff at Glenmere High School. With that said, I want for you to stand with me as we're going to be singing this chorus together. Thanks, thanks. I, I'll pray and say a few other things and then I'll go. I'm going to be asking all of us to stand. And as we sing together, thanks, thanks. We're giving God thanks for this gift of life. We're giving him thanks for answering our prayers. Our children have made it, for most of us, to the space that we desired for them all these years. And certainly, the fact that the school stands and welcomes you in this way, with open arms, we are really grateful for this school that our founding fathers had put together over 65 years ago, so we may be able to embrace it even now. Let's sing together. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest, O oh Lord, I give you thanks. I want all the pep students to be singing. Some of you are just looking. We're giving God thanks. Oh, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done I am so blessed my soul is at rest oh Lord I give you thanks one more time thanks thanks I give you thanks for all you My soul is at rest, 
O Lord, I give you thanks. Let everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just listen for a reading of a portion of God's word. According to 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'll read two portions, verses 4 to 14 and 32 to about 35. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? And ye are servants of Saul. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Verse 32. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight him, for thou art but a youth, but he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant have kept thy father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. 37, and David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord is with thee. This is a portion of God's word. The people say, just bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for this gift of life, Lord. Thank you for your people who have gathered in this place. Thank you for our founding fathers who got that vision. Thank you for those who have come after and has carried the vision. I pray, Lord, for the current board and the administration, the administrators of this school staff and oh, ancillary academic and our administrative staff i place them before you this morning and as we have new members added to this family i pray god that you will minister to their hearts and help them to understand the culture of this place and this oh god gathering this torch lighting ceremony serves to welcome them and allow them to get a peep as to what we do and who we are and Lord, as we look at the program, we are continuing to create waves. So I pray, Lord, that as they come this morning, they will join the team. And Lord, be not just witnesses to the bearing of the torch, but they will get their own candles, get them lit, so we may be able to carry on in this rich tradition of Glenmere High School. Have your own way, Father. We seek your blessings, and we ask that your hand be upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated, everyone. Yeah, man. I'm not sure now. Okay. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, parents, students, colleagues, 
If you turn and look at your programs, you'll see Glenmere High School at 65, creating waves, waves of achievements, valor, excellence, and sustainability. I look at this, and every year we have come up with some catchphrase which captures who we are, but in particular, points us in a particular direction for each academic year. And this morning, we have chosen the character of David to somehow channel some energy and to extend some motivation to all of us as we say welcome. We also want to say to you that, guess what? You must be a part of the movement. The text before us gives us an indication as to what our thoughts ought to be. Because if any at all, if any at all, we are going to create waves. We must understand some qualities out of the life of David that will help to spur us on. His life in scripture, it's pretty long and his accomplishments are very great. But we want to look at in what I consider to be the main thing that caused David to have been as prominent as he was, and even to this day, is pretty prominent, even in our own experience. David was a boy who seemingly experienced a particular kind of treatment from his family. He was not the boy who was up front in the house. It seemed to me that he was not the one who had the opportunity to go on to tertiary studies or probably not even to secondary school. The scripture suggests that when God sought a king for his land, Israel, for his people, he sent his servant Samuel down to Jesse's house. And Jesse had prepared some boys who were muscular and handsome, who were fitting the bill of being kings and rulers of the land. But they were not God's choice. And the man of God said to Jesse, have you any other sons? And he said, ah, ah, yes, there's another. But he tends the sheep. God has a way of plucking people out of obscurity, plucking people from the backside of the desert, from the middle of nowhere, and making them into his champions, causing them to create waves wherever they go. And as you have come to Glenmuir, from your many different places and your obscured, you know, situations and conditions, I want to suggest to you that God has caused you, young people, God has caused your children, parents, to come to a space like this, to be challenged academically, yes, to be challenged spiritually, to be challenged environmentally, to be challenged in a wholesome way so that they may become what? wave creators in this society of ours. But as I looked at David's life and the mere fact that God plucked him from where he was at, doing what was considered to be the menial things of life, I reckon that without any formal training, without any basic formal education, God would have educated David to be his strong man. When David came up, and he recognized what was happening at this particular point in Israel's history. As the giant Goliath stood across the valley of Elah and cried out to the armies of Israel, Send me a man. The Bible tells us that there were those who were afraid. And the king cringed. But as the boy David came on the scene, he made some expressions that caused even the king to wonder because he, in his mind, that's David, was reckoning that he is God's chosen vessel. He was reckoning that no giant must come and be disrespectful to the God in whom I serve. And as I pierce my eyes and my intellect and my spirit in this story, I recognize one main thing that I want you to recognize today. In David's mind, it was better for him to trust in God than to be a nine-foot giant. And I wanted to write it down because 
I, 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 I looked at it and I wondered what on God's earth could have caused David to think that he, a boy, could stand up to a giant nine feet tall. Most of us inside here, if we ever come face to face with such a creature, we would cringe in our boots and disappear. But because David had trust in God, because he knew what his God was capable of, he was able to stand up and declare that I will not stand around and let this beast, this creature, this giant of a structure cause my army and my country to go underground. So, so, so my brothers and sisters, David decided that I don't have the weaponry that he has. I don't have no shield. I don't have no helmet. I don't have no spear. I ain't got anything like that. But I have God. And he recognized that with God, I can do it. I can destroy the enemies. Most of us here today, our desire is to be a champion like Goliath. Our desire is to be successful and to be the best that we can. The idea of this nine feet tall giant, it's not just a physical structure of a man, but it speaks to the aspiration of most of us because humanity desires to be successful. And when we look around, nobody wants to be the guy on the corner, so to speak. We desire to be the Bidens. We desire to be the Microsoft boss, and we will make our own companies and be our own company executives. That kind of an imagery presents to us the characteristic of the nine-foot man. But I want to say to each youngster today that, that, that your motivation must not just to be a nine-foot tall giant of a man, the real big man in town because of what you have and what you can acquire. But with all the aspiration that you have, you must make sure that you extend and extend trust in Almighty God. Because you see, the nine-foot man represented historical notes. The nine-foot man represented what? The accolades of the past. When Goliath echoed who he was, he was really talking about who he was. And you are here today, students of PEP who are coming into Glenmuir High School. Your great grades, when they were published, they immediately became historical notes. I want to suggest to you that the Glenmuir experience cannot be fought with your pep energies. Goliath could not be fought with the, just the memories of what David had accomplished. But he had to renew his trust and faith in God who gave him the courage to fight the battles that were ahead of him. I want to suggest to you that as hard as you work then, this experience demands much more work. And if you're going to accomplish, if you're going to be, if you're going to what? Achieve all the things that we expect of you, plus what you expect of yourself. You can't leave God out of the picture. You have to what? You have to trust God. You have to expand your faith in him. I want to say to you, young children, I know in many places, God has been taken out of your spaces. But you're old enough to get 90s and 80s. He tells me you're old enough to recognize that there's a being in control of the universe. He is in control of you. And you need to seek him and extend your trust in him. Because with all your aspirations, it means nothing. If you have no trust and faith in the Father. You want to be the real big man. You really want to be nine feet tall. You want to be talked about. You want to be remembered in a special way. Do it the David way. David got stuff after all. But we remember him most for his trust in God. And for the achievements that he had while he looked to the Lord. Welcome to Glenmuir High School. And I pray that as you come, you will hold on to God as we create waves of achievements, valor, excellence, and sustainability. You can only get that the God way, the David's way, the Glenmuir way. God bless you, and you have a great day. Amen. 
Do you know this little song? Giants do die, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Do you know that one? You don't know that one? All right, write it down. You'll have to learn that one. Is there a David in the auditorium today? Anyone with the name David? Please stand, sir, with the real David. Please stand up. David, you are little, but you are? Talawa, like us Jamaicans. Come to the center, sir. God will pluck you, David, from obscurity into his marvelous light so you can create waves of purpose in your life. This is my prayer for you, David. Say amen. Come and show us your muscular strength. <laughs> Turn around, sir. Show them how brave you are. Flex those muscles. Show them how you're going to take on the waves of Glenmuir High School. Oh, you want me to help you? All right, let's go. Touch it. Touch it. All right, your time, your time. I don't have any muscles. Huh? He says he doesn't have any muscles. Huh? All right, so David doesn't know his strength as yet, right? So at Glenmuir, we're going to do what? Unleash his strength for him. Which school are you from? I'm from Mineral Light. Mineral Heights Christian Preparatory School. Mineral Heights Christian Preparatory School. Give him a hand for being brave to come forward. Go forth, David, and spread your strength to others. As I formally welcome you, I am yours truly, Miss Fiona Mullings, fast student of the Glenmuir High School, and now a proud teacher of geography. And I've seen some of my past teachers, so I have to behave myself today. Hi, Miss Holmes. <laughs> All right, so join me in this welcome song. I'm so happy to see you. I've written a short song. Good to see you. Mm, put your hands together. So glad you're here. Good to see you. Mm. So glad you're here. Good to see you. Mm. So glad your hair, Glenmuir, is so glad that you're here. Turn to your left and to your right and say, I'm happy to see your neighbor. And tell them something nice in their ears so they can smile and blush. Look at this brilliant smile. <laughs> All right, so today we're here to create waves. And as we make up for time, I just want you from this side, when we score a goal and you see in the stadium, the waves being formed, let us create that wave starting from my left, coming over to my right. We are going to create a wave after three, one, two, three. All right, that was warm up. That was warm up of the Mexican wave. When you do it again, you're going to say, Woo! You're going to say, Waves. One, two, three. Waves. Woo! That looked beautiful. Let's do it one last time, but I need the head table to participate. One, two, three. Waves. Excellent. Excellent. What does a doubling wave mean? Wow. We're going to create some wow moments. A means waves of achievement. All right. V is for waves of valor. E is waves of Let's say that again. Excellence. Excellence is a must at the Glenmuir High School. And S is for All right. So we're going to create all of those this year at Glenmuir celebrating how many years? 65 years. Is there anyone who is 65 years old today? What, miss? No, not you. <laughs> Mrs. Corny Williams, raise her hand. Is there anyone who is celebrating 65 years today? No, not yet. All right, so it's very important to note that we respect time. So there is a young lady, she was here at least minutes after seven o'clock, she was so excited. She could not wait to get out of her bed. 
She is from the Hazard Primary School. I wonder if she knows herself. Miss Aliana Cybron. Cybron, wear this pretty little face. Come and join me and receive your token of appreciation for respecting the time to be here. To be on time, you have to be before time. So I invite Mrs. Hamilton, head of the geography department, to hand over. What did you get? A calculator. A calculator. Say thank you, miss. Thank you, miss. Smile for the camera. Give her a hand. Give her a hand for being brave to be here on time and already creating waves. So as we press on, I'm not too much of a singer, but I'm going to invite the official songbird to come and bless your hearts with a song. And her name is Mrs. Yonique Sargent. Put your hands together for her. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. One, two. All right, let me say special welcome to our, our PEP scholars. And uh, this song that I'll be doing is specifically for you. And feel free to personalize the song this morning. As Mr. Parkin said earlier, the energy of PEP, you will require more than the energy of PEP for Glenmuir High School. And I think this song will basically motivate you to propel to higher heights. There will be mountains that I will have to climb. And there will be valleys I will have to fight. But victory or defeat, it's up to you to decide. But how can you expect to win if you never try? You just can't give up now. You've come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you. Never said there wouldn't be trials. Never said I wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way I want it to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel all hope is gone, I just lift my head up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. Oh, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. If you know it, can you sing with me? Pep Scholars. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. You just can't give up now. You've come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy. And 
said, I don't believe he's brought you this far. I don't believe he's brought you this far. I don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you. Thank you. Never give up. Keep roaring, keep swishing and swashing like the waves. Welcome to our lawyer in training who recently stepped in, Mr. Stephen Nelson. Thank you, sir, for being here. And as we move forward, please put your fingers together and snap a welcome for our and your and my dear principal, Dr. Marsha Imgrid Smalling. <laughs> Imgard, okay, thank you. Put your hands together, man. This is your principal. Decked in her beautiful colors. Isn't she looking lovely as usual? You better say yes. Our master of ceremonies, um, vice principals, our guest speaker, just left Glenmere yesterday, um, our chief torchbearer, alumna, and former principal, Mrs. Manasia Williams, Mr. Max Leibel, top CSEC performer, 2022, and Abigail Atkins, top PEP performer, Denby Primary School, colleagues, parents, and our and our PEP students, good morning. Good morning. good morning. I don't think you're quarter as tired as I am. So I want for you to keep the energy up. Ladies and gentlemen, students, I am extremely happy to be here this morning. Our sixth welcome and torch lighting ceremony. It means so much to us. And as we progress through the program, you will understand why. We welcome you to the Hub of Excellence. And I heard my student leaders welcoming you to the Hub of Excellence. Did you feel welcome? Did they make you feel welcome? I'm going to ask the student leaders to just come and line up right here. Quickly, move with alacrity. Come quickly, just line up across here. We took them off their summer break. Okay, they're just some of them and uh, we want for every single PEP student to see them as your example. They've been through the tough times. They've been through, I don't want to be at Glen Mayor, they're too strict. <laughs> see the smile on their faces? They can't say a word, but they have made it and they have made us extremely proud and we're happy to have them here today to welcome you to Glenmere High School, the number one high school, not only in Clarendon, but in Jamaica. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You can take your seats. First and foremost, let me extend the heartiest congratulations to all of our PEP students. PEP students, please stand for us. Please stand. Please stand. You have done well, and you ought to be smiling. You ought to be thankful. You ought to be so, so proud. And I'm going to be asking the top performers from the different schools to just quickly come to the top for us. If you were a top performer in your school, just please come and stand at the front. Mrs. Mullins, I'm going to ask you just to take the other mic. I'm going to ask them just to, it's a lot of them, wow.
You can go all the way down to the left. Uh, Mr. Jones has another mic. Oh, they're asking you to go on the stage. We might not have the time for all of you to introduce yourselves. I didn't anticipate it would be so many of you, but we'll at least allow some of you to do so. Come on, just go quickly, just move fast. Right. You may have to make two rows. The shorter ones stay at the front so that you're not lost. Okay, the shorter ones come here, please. Tow this line. Step forward and tow this line. Okay, Mrs. Mullins, just ask a few of them because we will not have the time for everyone um, to introduce themselves. And parents, colleagues, I'm doing this because sometimes when we have parent consultations and when you get the reports, sometimes you will say, but him leave primary school top pep performer, so how comes they're not performing now? So we're going to hold them accountable and we're going to be asking them to take responsibility as to whether you continue to evolve and grow, or if you're going to be allowing the distractions to get the better of you and you stop performing well. So all over to you, Miss Mullins. All right, so good morning again, students. Good morning, Miss. How are you feeling today? We are fine, thank you, and how are you? I'm well, thank you for asking. All right, so please say your name, the school you're from, and you're going to say how you're going to create those waves in the Glenmuir High School. How are you going to be a positive impact here at Glenmuir High School? My name is Olamar Williams. I'm from Foundation Prep. He said he's going to have an heart attack. He's nervous. Pray for him, please. <laughs> All right, breathe and calm down. All right, so... All right, Doc, you go ahead. You, you, you could just let them say the name and the school for the time being, just to save time. Okay. So just briefly introduce yourself, your name and your school. My, na my name is Lamario Nelson, and I'm from Maypen Primary School. Very good. My name is Kishana Roach, and I'm from Richmond Park Primary. My name is Faith Clayton, and I'm from Victoria Primary and Infant School. Good. My name is Rhea Allison, and I'm from Chapton Primary School. My name is Shara Jackson and I'm from Rockover Primary School. My name is Nastani Brown and I'm from Frankfield Primary and Infant School. All right, very good. You're doing very well, students. My name is Caden Bartley and I am from Foundation Preparatory School. My name is Carissa Morris and I'm from the St. Thomas More Preparatory School. My name is Oralee Boone and I'm from Thompson Town Primary and Infant School. My name is Michaela Malcon and I'm from Freetown Primary School. My name is Malik Smith and I'm from Mount Airy Primary and Infant School. My name is Noel Spencer and I'm from Morgan's Pass Primary School. My name is Calden Makala and I am from Monsignor Colin Bayer Preparatory School. Give them a hand. They're very brave to be up here. Okay. All right, so we don't have the time for everyone. Um, or, or let, let the front row come off and then you just quickly see if you can grab the others quickly. The first row just exit. The first row that spoke already just exit and go back to your seats. And then the others quickly will give you a chance. S since I start already. <laughs> All right, second row, please step forward, all of you, to this line. Step forward quickly. All right, so you're going to say your name and you're going to say which school you're coming from. 
My name is Eve Edwards, and I am from Mineralized Christian Preparatory. Thank you. Come forward. My name is Alija Aljad, and I am from Moko Primary and Infant School. My name is Jamoy. My name is Jamoy Nikoi Honigan, and I am from Hayes Primary and Infant School. My name is Anila Korea, and I am from Green Park Primary School. My name is Amelia Foster, and I am from the Bellas Gay Primary School. My name is Giovanni Bernard, and I am from Barton's Primary and Infant School. My name is Nehemiah Baker, and I am from Old Arbor Bay Primary School. My name is Aid Lee Shirley, and I am from Effortville Primary School. My name is Rayshawn Williams, and I am from Midland Preparatory School. My name is Joshua Cunningham, and I am from Midland Preparatory School. My name is Alena C. Brown. I'm the head girl of Hazard Primary Infant and Special Education Unit. Awesome. My name is Josiah Wall, and I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name is Damara McCook, and I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name is Raheem Jackson, and I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name is Elan Lee, I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name is Nasania Bahada Singh, I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name. My name is Danny Welch and I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name is Amarley Walker and I'm from Mineral Heights Primary School. My name is Marcian Edgecombe and I'm from Maypen High and Preparatory School. My name is Zara Price. I am the deputy head girl of Freetown Primary School. <laughs> My name is Neve Farkerson and I'm from Freetown Primary School. Thank you. Next row, step forward, please. My name is Damona Blake, and I'm from the Crooked River Primary and Infant School. My name, my name is Tyre Wilson, I am, and I am the head boy of Marlemont Primary and Infant School. <laughs> my name is Zuri Halstead, and I am from Glenmere Preparatory School. My name is Amber Reed, and I'm from Glenmere Preparatory School. My name is Alini Stennett, and I'm from Glenmere Preparatory School. My name is Kalia Webb, and I'm from Glenmere Preparatory School. So we have four persons tying at Glenmere Prep for top prep student. That's awesome. My name is Zadine Brown, and I'm from John Austin Primary School. My name is Patrick Patch, and I'm from John Austin Primary. My name... My name is Kristen McKenzie, and I'm from Maypen Primary School. My name, sorry, okay. My name is Jada Thomas, and I am the deputy head girl of Mineral Heights Christian Prep. My name is Kavon Golding, and I'm the head boy of Mineral Heights Christian Preparatory School. My name is Abigail Atkins, and I'm from Denby Primary School. My name, is, my name is Deandra Passmore, and I'm from Hayes Primary and Infant School. My name is Janelle Evans, and I'm from Tollgate Primary and Infant School. My name is Sakara Henry, and I am from the Tollgate Primary and Infant School. My name is Abril Dawkins, and I am from the Four Pass Primary and Junior High School. My name is Christian Ferran, and I am from the Four Pass Primary and Junior High School. My name is Jaden Logan, and I am the head boy of Four Pass Primary and Junior High School. My name is Jacarda Bryan, and I am from Thompson Primary and Infant School. My name is Laranja Jacto and I am from Washington Primary School. As we continue with the last row, last but no in, by no means least, right? My name is Jamali Williamson. My name is Jamali Williamson and I am a prefect from Chapeltown Primary School. My name is Josiah West, and I am the head boy of the Roseville Primary School. My name is Shanae McLeod, and I'm the head boy of Ma St. Margaret Mary Preparatory Basic School. My, 
My name is Terry Cole, and I'm a prefect of the Mount Liberty Primary School. Lift your voices. My name is Michaelis, and I'm a prefect of the Macintosh Memorial Primary School. My name is Tashika Green, and I'm from Racecourse Primary and Infant School. My name is Allison Rose, and I'm from the St. Robert Bellarmine Prep School. My name is Joshua Archer, and I'm from Mineral Arts Christian Prep. My name is Davian Willis, and I'm the head boy at Ali Primary School. My name is Gabriela McGregor, and I'm the deputy head girl of Mocha Primary and Infant School. My name is Jamila Lawrence, and I am a prefect from the Mocha Primary and Infant School. My name is DeAndra Phipps, and I am the deputy head girl of Shanders Penn Primary and Infant School. Put your hands together for them. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Students, parents, you have chosen Glenmuir High School as a platform to launch your dreams, and we're thrilled to have you join our vibrant community. Your presence here signifies not only the beginning of a new chapter in your lives, but also the continuation of a rich legacy that spans almost six and a half decades. As we gather here, we do so under the theme for the upcoming academic year, Glenmuir at 65, Creating Waves. Creating waves of um, achievements, valor, excellence, and sustainability. Together, we will create waves that will shape not only our individual paths, but also the broader communities we serve. Achievements will be the cornerstone of our journey. Through unwavering dedication and a commitment to personal growth, we will strive for greatness in every endeavor we undertake. Let us set high standards for ourselves, push the boundaries of our capabilities, and celebrate our collective achievements, both big and small. Valor will be our guiding light. With courage and resilience, we will overcome challenges and embrace opportunities for personal development. Let us be bold in our pursuits, unafraid to take risks, and resilient to face the adversities. It is through such acts of valor that we will truly discover our true potential. Excellence will continue to be our standard. We are committed to fostering a culture of excellence in all aspects of our school life, from academics to sports, from the arts to community service. Let us strive to be the best versions of ourselves, supporting and inspiring one another along the way. Together, we will cultivate an environment that nurtures excellence and empowers every individual to shine. Sustainability will be our legacy, recognizing the importance of preserving our planet and building a better future. We will champion sustainable practices within our school and beyond. Let us be mindful of our impact on the environment, embrace innovation, and work towards creating a sustainable world for generations to come. Dear students, staff, and parents, as we embark on this exciting academic year, I encourage each of you to embrace the spirit of Glenmuir at 65, creating waves. Let us stand united in our pursuit of knowledge, growth, and positive change. Together, we possess the power to make a lasting impact on our school, our communities, and the world at large. To you, our PEP students, we urge you to seize every opportunity that comes your way. Immerse yourselves in the rich tapestry of learning experiences. Forge meaningful connections and embrace the transformative power of education. Remember, the journey ahead may be challenging, but with hard work, determination, 
and the unwavering support of our dedicated staff, success is within your reach. To our esteemed staff members, I extend my deepest gratitude for your unwavering support. You really are the bedrock of everything that we do at Glenmayer High School. For the past couple of months, the country has been going through so much as it relates to the appreciation shown to staff members. And you never dropped your hands. You kept pushing, pressing, and persevering. You kept producing the feathers that we have placed in our caps. And we will never ever be able to compensate you for all you do. I hope that will prevent you from leaving us. That was the intention. As we stand here today, let us also take a moment to reflect on the remarkable legacy that Glenmuir High School has built over the past 65 years. Our school has been a beacon of excellence, and the data is there to show. Nurturing generations of young minds and empowering them to become leaders in their respective fields. It is a legacy that we carry with great pride and responsibility. Three of Glenmere's four appointed principals are past students. You're privileged today to see two of us in the same venue. Mrs. Manasia Williams, who will be our chief torchbearer, and then of course me. Two members of the current reggae boys team are past students. Andre Blake, the captain, and Kevon Lambert. Did you know that? Did you know that? All right. So give, put your hands together for them. They won against Trinidad and... Uh, that made us feel really proud. In May, we celebrated Africa Day, and His Excellency Mr. Esmond Reed, High Commissioner of Jamaica to Nigeria, hosted a podcast via Zoom with our students, and that was such an honor. We have two Rhodes Scholar. We have won the school's challenge quiz on four occasions, and we have been pushing to become repeat champions. Since 2020, we entered the first Tech Challenge Robotics competition. We were second on the first occasion, and then we won gold on the other two occasions. Our students have been national spelling bee champions, and our guest speaker, you see him smiling, and I'm sure he'll tell you a little bit about that. We have excelled in the UE Mathematics Olympiad. We are the first champions of the UTech Mathematics competition. Last year, Orlando Patterson, the Orlando Patterson-led team, based on research, ranked Glenmuir High School number one in the island. Yes. This is because Glenmuir consistently performed well academically and in a wide range of co-curricular activities excelled. The choir, debate, you name it, football, cricket, basketball, um, Bible quiz, Spanish quiz, the cadet um, excelled, and the list goes on. And I'm sure you understand that I cannot go through all of the accolades that we have earned over the years. As we celebrate this milestone, let us honor the visionaries, educators, and students who have contributed to shaping Glenmuir's identity and success. Let their achievements serve as a reminder that we are part of something much bigger than ourselves, a living testament to the power of education and the potential that resides within each of us. Parents, you have gotten to this stage, and I have spoken at a couple of graduations over the past three days, and I have charged persons that listen. The energy that you had put into preparing your child, your children, to attend Glenmuir High School, you're going to have to triple that energy. High school demands so much more. And what we have observed over the years is that once some parents drop them off at Glenmuir High School, sometimes we don't see them until it's graduation time, child has not met the requirements, and you come appealing. We do not want that to happen. Excellence is a habit. And so, as of today, you are a part of the family, and we want to see you. 
We want to hear from you. We want to stay connected. There are many of these PEP students who went to school Monday to Friday. They went to morning class and they went to afternoon classes. They went to Saturday classes and they went to Sunday classes. Can anybody say amen to that? Yeah. All right. So why is it when they have gotten into high school, so much more subjects to do, the work becomes so much more difficult, they are developing and so there are greater distractions. Why do you think they do not need greater support from you? So when we organize these extra lessons and these programs, we're expecting that you are going to insist because you are the adults. And too many times we allow our children to run our homes. And that is why we spend so much of our time as administrators. Mr. Edwards is here. He spends majority of his time, along with Mr. Richards, just dealing with issues that parents could have prevented. When we say, for example, that you're not supposed to be having your cell phone at school, and when students during class time do TikTok and do things that damage their own integrity and reputations, damage the school's brand, then we spend time trying to fix that. And then you have parents who have the guts to come and defend it. When you tell your children that the pants is too big, take it in. No, sir, I'm me telling you take it in because it's too big. If it is as big as a parachute, it is the school's rule. If it is as big as a parachute, it is the rule of the school. And so we are asking you, parents, you have to stand with us. You have to hold our hands. Because we set these standards, we set these rules, because we want Glenmere to be number one. And we can't be number one in academics if we are distracted by these petty things that are unnecessary. And so we are asking you, we are appealing to you, please. I am going to be speaking about the money. I can't help but doing this. Up to 2019, Glenmere had a compliance rate of 85, 87% of our parents would pay their fees. That is our greatest source of revenue to run all the activities you hear me speak about in addition to others. The government changed the policy and we can't do anything about that and uh, when it came out, I endorsed, I said, well, if parents do not have to, it's good for us because we will have more students coming out and the pressure will be off the parents to be thinking about that. But parents, you know that the reality is that we cannot operate without the funds. We probably had about 30% of our parents for the past two or so years who have opted to make the parents' contribution. In March, we went to New York for a UN conference. We have Michaela, who was a part of the team. And we had to be walking to the classes with a box, begging students money so that we could go. As principal, I had to be selling pizza and ice cream and the rest of things. And I don't think that a school like Glenmuir should have to be doing that. And so parents, I am humbly asking that you make the contribution. Because if you don't, all of these activities, the quiz, the football, the basketball, the Bible quiz, the Spanish quiz, the debate, the performing arts, all of these things. There were times when we could assist students with graduation and stuff. This time around, we were not able to do it because the funds were just not there. At graduation, I explained that we had a deficit of $10 million. And so we are having functions and we have to be saying to the teachers who are working, the staff members, you have to buy your lunch for yourself, even though we are giving them additional work to do. And uh, I know some persons would not want me to do this. 
but I am going to do it. I'm putting my pride aside because I do not want the additional pressure on my head, wondering who am I going to call to beg no in order to continue the operations of the school. And so I'm asking you, I know it is hard, but please I am asking you, it is a part of the investment in your children. Just tell yourself that, listen, I am doing this for my child. I want my school to be a safe environment. I want my school to be a productive one, a healthy one, and my contribution will make a difference. And so if you have to pay in three parts or four parts, I am asking you, put that little bit aside so that we don't have to find ourselves in that predicament again all right are you promising me that you'll make an effort are you put up your hand if you if you promise that you're going to make an effort and if it's a thousand dollars you have you're going to pay your thousand dollar with pride and say yes this is an investment in my child's education you see how much hands go up Oh, the president of our local chapter is here. Um, I didn't even realize that Sandra is. This is um, Mrs. Sandra Bailey. She is the president of the Jamaica chapter of the Past Students Association. And she's also a member of the board of management. <laughs> Finally, before I take my seat. Your students pass PEP and their are the hub of excellence. And then the next major phase is going to be that you look forward to is graduation, don't it? We love graduation. And uh, one of the seven habits of highly productive people, Stephen Covey, is that we start with the end in mind. And we're going to start graduation. And I want for you parents and students to just close your eyes and you're going to visualize your child on graduation day on the front lawn. I want for you to visualize which members of your family will be there to cheer you on. I want for you to visualize if your child will be wearing that gold sash marked academic honors. I want for you to visualize if you want your child to wear that silver sash marked outstanding achievement. I want for you to reflect and think about the work you will have to put in to achieve that end. I want for you to think about the grit that you have to get through the adversities that will come. How committed are you to that goal, to that purpose? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you committed to holding your child's hand throughout the phases, throughout five years? Some of them will fall, but we want for them to rise when they fall. I fall at times, but thank God I have that strength and resilience to get up each time that I fall. What if they don't? Who will be blamed? We want every single child who is sitting in this auditorium, the Sydney Scott Auditorium, to make that commitment in your heart right now that in 2028, June, I will be marching with the flagrant pride. And your march will represent resilience, pride, gratitude, courage. Did you picture yourselves? Did you picture yourselves, students? Students, did you picture yourselves? Marching, graduating from Glenmere High School, academic honors, outstanding achievement. This sound hopeless. Students, please respond. Could you visualize yourselves? Are you committing to ensuring that you do whatever it takes to be outstanding graduates? Yes. All right, we're holding you accountable. And as I take my seat, once again, welcome to the Hub of Excellence. 
And we pray that you will do well. We pray that you will excel in all areas. We pray that no matter what is taking place, you will keep pushing forward. The adversities will come, but with God, all things are possible. And of course, when we commit all our plans to the Lord, he will definitely establish them. And let us all proclaim Flagrans Veritatis Studio, burning with a zeal for truth. By the way, before I go, the student from Richmond Park Primary, I'm bigging you up because that's my alma mater. Thank you so much, Dr. Smalling. Give her a hand again. And since we're bigging up alma mater, Doc, my alma mater is the green and white, not C bar. <laughs> But the Marleymount Primary and Infant School. <laughs> I see Mrs. Nelson. Welcome, Miss. All right. So if you are listening keenly, we are, you are the class of, which year? The graduating class of? 2028. You have five years to rise. To rise to the top like eagles. And it's very important. I'm going to do an action research on that topic, parental involvement in improving academics and behavior in our children. So I've observed it as well, and I pushed this year as a first form teacher to have an, a session where all the parents were invited to share and present a token of appreciation on Children's Day and to just share how much I love my child and to be present in interacting in the children's lives, just peeping in, checking in. And can you believe it? Those students whose children come, majority of them, well, on my subject area, they got an A. So I need to do an official one. It was just a tester. So parents, please pledge that you will be involved in the child's lives, in the children's lives, all the years of their lives even when they're adults as well, right? All right, so as we move on, it's that time you have been waiting for. Give me a drum roll, give me a drum roll. Give me a wave, give me a wave. One, two, three, Mexican wave. You should say wave. One, two, three, wave, wave, let's go. So I now invite from Form 1H, Miss Gabrielle Lawrence, Gabrielle Lawrence, where are you? And she's going to do an awesome introduction of our guest speaker. Welcome her. Good morning, everyone. The privilege is mine to introduce to you today's guest speaker. Stephen Nelson is a student at the Norman Manley Law School and a former deputy head boy of the Glenmere High School. Upon leaving Glenmere in 2018, he enrolled at the Faculty of Law, UI Mona, where he would complete his Bachelor of Laws with first class honors in 2021. While at the faculty, he served on the UI Mona Guild Council as deputy hall chairman of Chancellor Hall and on the Mona Law Society executive as sports chairperson. He was also an executive member of the Jamaica Union of Tertiary Students. Upon graduating in 2021, he received several prizes for topping particular courses and for consistently remaining on the Dean's List during all three years of his degree program. He was also awarded the Most Rounded Student Prize and was featured in Mona Law's 50th anniversary newsletter. Mr. Nelson has a love for public speaking, debating, and mooting, which saw him cop several Best Speaker Awards in debating and mooting competitions. He most recently represented the Norman Manley Law School at the Jessup International Law Mooting Competition in Washington, D.C., where his team was placed in the top 16 out of over 700 schools. With this love for mooting and debating in mind, it is no surprise that he wants to venture into litigation in a couple months' time. When he is admitted into practice, God's willing. Stephen is a lover of football 
and won the UE Mona Champions League football competition twice. First, as a player in 2018, and then as a coach in 2022. He also went to the finals of the intramural football competition twice with his beloved Chancellor Hall team. His other hobbies include reading, writing, cooking, volunteerism, and outreach and playing the drums. He most recently served as the president of the Norman Manley Law School Students Association and was a finalist for the 2023 Jamaica Rose Scholarship. He lives by the mantra, Audentes Fortuna Ivat, which translates to, Fortune favors the brave. Thank you. Mic check. Principal Dr. Marsha Smalling, members of the school board, vice principals, chief torchbearer and former principal, Mrs. Monesia Williams, who assisted me so much in second form when I was doing the spelling bee. It's good to see you, miss. You're looking lovely. Retirement suits you. <laughs> Teachers, other members of staff, students, the PEP scholars, the reason why we are here, parents and well-wishers. Good morning. The pleasure is mine to deliver the keynote address on this momentous occasion, Glenmere High's 2023 Welcome and Torch Lighting Ceremony. Now I have to confess something. This ceremony wasn't around when I got here in 2011. And when I got the invitation, I started to feel a bit old. <laughs> and I realized that even though it feels like just yesterday I was in high school, just last week I was walking around this lovely compound. It's actually been five years. Half a decade has passed since I left Glenmere. Wow. No, there are some changes for sure. Buildings and developments and people who I might not recognize, but fundamentally, it is the same Glenmuir. It is the same hub of excellence, which helped to mold me into the person who I am today. But we're not here to talk about me. <laughs> today, we are focusing on these bright-eyed and bushy-tailed matriculants, these brilliant PEP students who have achieved something that others can only dream of. You have passed for the Glenmuir High School. You'll notice I said the. When I was in university, my classmates, they learned very quickly that Glenmere High School students were a set of the proudest persons who you'll come across. Because whenever we'd start a new course and the lecturer would say, state your name and which school you're coming from, we would proudly say, my name is XYZ and I hail from the Glenmere High School. That is the beacon of light from the center of our aisle. So students, you are quite lucky to be here. And I'll give you about a month. In just about a month, you will be instilled with the same pride and fervor in this Flagrant's brand. Our conversation today is going to center around a theme that I like quite a lot. Glenmere at 65, creating waves. Now, I want you to repeat it with me so that I know that we're in tune. We're on the same wavelength, no pun intended. And when I say waves, I want you to do this motion with me. So after three, Glenn Muir at 65, creating waves. One more time. Glenn Muir at 65, creating waves. And the waves here, there are waves of achievement, waves of valor waves of excellence, and waves of sustainability. I'll touch on achievement and excellence jointly because they are so closely related. And then we'll look at valor and sustainability in turn. Boys and girls, the reason why I like this theme is because I feel like you will relate to it quite easily. If we're creating waves and working with waves, you can think of yourself as surfers. And just like our surfer, need certain tools to ensure that they can create the wave and ride the wave. You're going to need some tools as well. The surfer needs the surfboard, the wetsuit that they're going to wear, the sunscreen to protect their skin. You are going to need some tools 
to ensure that you can create waves of achievement, waves of valor, waves of sustainability, and waves of excellence. So how do we go about creating waves of achievement and excellence? Boys and girls, I personally feel like this one will be easy for you because there is no place that fosters a culture of excellence like Glenmere High School. The world-class educators that we have here will ensure that you are well on your way to excelling in everything that you set your hand and your mind to. You will learn quickly here that the teachers here, and I'd like to borrow a quote from Ms. Holmes, the teachers here like bright, polished, and intelligent students. And if you don't get on the bright, polished, and intelligent train, the train is going to leave you. You're going to realize that you're in a place that produces only the best, produces the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. You are all a cut above the rest. And with that foundation being laid, it is now for you to find out how you're going to tap into the hub of excellence. And how you do this, it's quite simple, actually. You listen, you learn, and you adapt. You'll have to listen. Listen to your teachers. You'll have to learn from your teachers. There is a reason why they have been placed in a position to impart knowledge to you. And once you take instructions from these exceptional teachers, they will guide you along the path to achieving excellence. You will also need to listen to and learn from your peers. There are so many valuable lessons that you can learn from your schoolmates. The scriptures say that iron sharpens iron. I would like to take it a step further and say that when flagrant iron sharpens flagrant iron, a spark is created. And that spark is going to illuminate the path to excellence. Now, the final thing that you'll have to do is to adapt. You'll have to come to terms with the fact that this isn't primary school or prep school. You'll have to go about things in a different way. For example, I will let you in on a little secret. When I was in primary school, I didn't study. I would just pay attention in class, grasp the concepts, and reproduce it in the test, in the exams. And that was enough for me. That worked for me. But when I came to Glenmere, <laughs> I had to adapt. It was swim or sink, or to put it accurately, it was study or sink. So I had to begin to study to keep up with the class and all these new subjects that I was doing. And just the same, you will have to adapt. But I can't stress it enough. As I said earlier, I am not worried about you guys. You are in the best place where you could possibly be. And I'm sure you're going to excel whether academically or as a part of one of the sports teams or on our world-renowned choir or in one of the performing arts groups or in some other extracurricular activity or all of the above. Once you are a surfer who listens, who learns, and who adapts, I have no doubt that you're going to create waves of achievement and excellence. Now let's take a look at creating waves of valor. When it comes on to valor, we're talking about being brave, being courageous, being fearless. One thing about Glenmere students is that we are fearless. When we step into a room, people sit up and start to pay attention. I'll tell you a little story about an instance where I had to show some valor as a Glenmere student. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I love football and if I didn't go off to university and to law school to try to become an attorney, I would like to believe that I would be off somewhere playing football professionally and hoping to one day share the field with my favorite player, Lionel Messi. Greatest of all time, by the way. <laughs> so when I was leaving primary school, the Marlebone Primary School, in fact, <laughs> and coming into Glenmere for first form, I didn't play football for my primary school. My extracurricular activities are strictly academic related. That's what you get when you have a mother for, a teacher for a mother. <laughs> so it was things like spelling bee, the reading competition, quiz and so on. But I was playing football every single day in my community because the ball field is right behind my house and I would get countless admonitions about tracking my dirty feet on the tile <laughs> when I come in from the ball field. So I was still playing football. 
So I'm at summer school now, coming into Glenmere, and I played in the Interform football competition. And the persons, they told me that I should try out for the under 14 team in September because they were impressed. So I am very excited. And I go home to share this with my mom. And I'm pretty excited because my brother, who also came to Glenmere, my older brother, he played on the Docker Stock Up team. So I'm saying I'm going to follow in his footsteps. But guess what? I have a church sister who is also a teacher at Glenmere. She shall remain nameless. <laughs> And she told my mom that she shouldn't allow me to play football because the footballers will have a bad influence on me. She didn't say it like that, but I'm pretty neat up. <laughs> and this is where the bravery comes in. So mommy said, no, no football. And mommy's word is law. And you'd think that, yeah man, that's the end of the matter. That's final. But I decided to brave up. <laughs> And I made a pact with my mom, and I said that if I play football in first form and my grades don't drop, it doesn't affect me. Then, no, if I play football and my grades drop, then you can take me out of the program because you would have been proved right. But if I continue to get good grades while playing football, you have to let me continue because I would have proved to you that I can balance them both. She agreed. <laughs> We had a deal, we shook on it and everything. Suffice to say, I played football every year, <laughs> right up to the Dakar Stock of level. And I didn't hear a peep more about football having a negative impact on me. And I was better off for it, playing football and participating in other extracurricular activities. They helped me to become a way more rounded student. It helped me to make lifelong friends and it opened doors of opportunity for me, left, right, and center. And interestingly, when I was leaving Glenmere in 2018, that same teacher slash church sister, we were having a conversation, and she said to me, boy, Steve, you proved me wrong. <laughs> I didn't think that you would be able to play football and still maintain that standard. And that was a really proud moment for me. And how did all of this happen? I had to be brave. I had to show some valor. I had to step out of my comfort zone and challenge myself to ensure that I could still balance everything and still maintain that standard of excellence. So that is my charge to you. Be brave, be courageous, and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Remember, a surfer who steps out of their comfort zone will create waves of valor. Let's touch on creating waves of sustainability. When I think of sustainability in this context, I am referring to ensuring that you can maintain a standard of excellence, not only now, but also in the future, three, four, five years from now. And how will you go about doing that? How do you go about creating the path to sustainable excellence? I think there are two ways that you can do this. The first is to motivate yourself, and the second, it comes down to your support system. So firstly, find what motivates you. Find the reason why you want to do well and allow that to drive you. So whether you want to make your parents proud, whether you want to follow in the footsteps of your older brother or sister, whether you want to land a job in your dream career, allow that goal, that objective, to be the force that drives you to work towards excellence the force that will tell you to keep on going, even when you just want to stop and take a break because, boy, it's too hard. For me, it's always been trying to make my mom proud and to one day repay her, repay her for all the sacrifices that she has made for me. So boys and girls, find your motivation and excellence will find you. Second thing now, the support system. You will hear people say that no man is an island. No man stands alone. And you think that, oh, it's just a saying. Nope. Every ounce of it is true. And if you are to find the path to sustainable excellence, and if you're going to stay there, you're going to need assistance. You're going to need help. So whether it's a group of dedicated classmates from primary or prep school, whether it is some new schoolmates, whether it is some friends from your community, find your tribe. Find like-minded people who have similar goals and each of you will need to help each other 
and build each other up so that we can all achieve excellence. High school is a roller coaster ride, trust me. And you're going to need people in your corner to help you through it. If you are religious, don't leave out God. Trust in him, rely on him, and have faith in him as much as you can. Because he has a greater plan and design for you, even when you can't see it. This is a surefire way to get on the path to sustainable excellence. Your motivation will keep you on the path, keep you going when you feel like stopping, and your support system will help you along when you become stagnant or dormant. So remember, boys and girls, a surfer who finds their motivation and support system finds the path to creating waves of sustainability. On a lighter note, I am happy to see that purple is the dominant color in here. And that must mean that Gibson House is still the dominant host. <laughs> so boys and girls, for your, for your sake, I hope that you land in Gibson. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Wherever you land, I'm sure you're going to flourish. But I'm, of course, partial to Gibson House. And you'll notice I'm wearing purple. This wasn't planned. <laughs> But sometimes they say the Lord works in mysterious ways. I think that my time must have elapsed by now, and I must make way for the other festivities that the program has in store for us. I leave you in good hands, knowing that as it did with me, Glenmuir will make its mark on you, and that will cause you in turn to go out and make your mark in the world. The flame of excellence has been lit and I'm sure that in the exciting years ahead, you're going to be guided by one of the most important phrases to anyone who passes through Glenmere High. That, of course, is our motto. Flagrans Veritatis Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. So boys and girls, keep the Flagrans fire burning, and I'm sure that great things are in store for you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. I just like truly recognize who you are. My mother and his mom taught at the same high school and I've been hearing about you for years. God is good. Blessings of the Lord be on you. <laughs> All right, so we're going in, we're going in and I have, I now invite to the podium, Miss Rihanna Allen of Form 1L just to say thank you to Mr. Stephen Nelson for his words of encouragement. So please return to the podium, Sir Nelson. Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Glenmore High School family, it is my honor to present a gift of a token of our appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Stephen Nestle for thanking him to be able to be present at her torch lighting ceremony for the class of 2028. Thank you so much, my dear Rihanna. And so it's time for some more excitement. Hmm. Let's see who were the persons paying attention. Number one question, who is the first to reach up here? In which year did our guest speaker enter Glenmuir High School? Pep student, come to the front, come to the front. <laughs> 2011. Is she correct? Put your hands together. Please collect your token. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now it's important to become all-rounders. He said a catchphrase. You will either swim or swim or sink. And you should surf the school waves. Be involved in extracurricular activities. And I think it's important for each of you to sign up for at least one extracurricular activity, at least two 
extracurricular activities to go on your reports and your resumes eventually. So balance is important and step out of your comfort zone. Once upon a time, you would not find me here in front of any camera doing this. I would be stuttering. I would be looking left, right. No, it's the other way. Left, <laughs> right on my toes. But thank God for the Glenmuir High School that will pull you out of your shells. So embrace the good support system and motivate yourself, encourage yourself as we launch into this academic school year. Now, I have two left feet, you know, so you know what that means. <laughs> All right, good. So these students are going to throw some legs. Do you remember back in the days? You throw some legs. Are they going to do the scare? The mentor? All right, we'll let them do what they do best. Please welcome on stage or Glenmuir High School JCDC Gold Medal Group of Dancers. While they, are, while they are setting up, I have a promotion for you guys, so please listen up. Can you see this? All right, so it's summer school 2023. Let me see the hands of those persons who are interested in coming to the Glenmere High School summer school 2023. Very well. So it's Mondays to Fridays. It starts July 10 to 28. July 10 to 28, please write down the date, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. Come for the learning and stay for the fun. Beginners to third form, you pay $9,000 for the entire course or $3,500 per week. And this includes the computer lab fee. Now, prospective fifth and fourth formers, it's $8,000 for any four CXE subjects. $500 for each additional subject. And if you need a little prep for your SBA, that cost is included as well, $500. 
So registration begins July 3rd. When is July 3rd? That's next week, Monday. So it's July 3rd, registration, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily. So it's our back to school fair. We'll be having coding, trip to the movies, Crocs and Socks Day, anime every day, karaoke, table tennis, go kart, Jamaica Day, daily prizes, bounce about galore, trampoline, mechanical bull. Can you imagine me riding the bull? Yes? <laughs> Pardon me? The date? Okay, it's July 10 to 28. Sure. And the grab bag. So for more information, please contact Mrs. Peter King. That's Mrs. Peter King. Please write down this number. It's 986 Two, three, seven, two. Okay. All right, give it up for our dancers. Welcome them again. Wow, I'm tired from watching that. How do you feel? 
energized, revived. You're ready to create some waves. All right. So let us proceed. It's your time, Glenmuir students or PEP matriculants. So what are you going to do now? I love to involve my students and my parents. So I need to know what are your expectations for 2023 September at the Glenmuir High School? So because we're a little pressed for time, I just need three schools, three students from three different schools, along with your parents, to come right beside me. And I'm not seeing you coming as it. There will be prizes and surprises, you know, so please come. Three students from three schools, so come and share with me. What are your expectations? I see Michelle coming and her son, braving it. All right. So that's, which school is this? St. Thomas More Prep. Mid Midland Preparatory School. And I need a different, a, a third school. Come on, Marley Mount Primary School. Represent your guest speaker well. All right, come on, students. Come on. <laughs> Where's your parents? Or your parents? All right, on my left. I, I have four, no problem. Sorry. All right, so in 60 seconds, guess what they're going to do? They are going to creatively, <laughs> I set you up, you know, I set you up. <laughs> they're going to creatively either do a short dub, a short song, or a short role play just to show or say, what are your expectations you know, when you come here in September 2023. So you're going to clap from 1 to 60, and they should come up with something very creative in that short period of time, because guess what? You said what a stress? Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have to think on our toes, right? Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, count with me, 5, 10, 15, 16, 20. <laughs> All right, calm down. I'll count 40, 41, 42. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. They're ready. They didn't even need one minute. 59, 59 and a quarter, 59 and a half, 59 and. What's your count after that, miss? 60. <laughs> All right. Put your hands together for them. Who is coming first? Punching at a little fella. You want to go first? All right. To say, so introduce yourself, your school, and then you. Good, uh, good morning. My name is Chantal Price. Yes. Um, my name is Zara Price. I come from Freetown Primary School. Okay, girl, look how hard we work. Glenn Muir, you there, no? Glenn Muir, Glenn Muir, you know, so them say, creating waves, achievements, valor, excellence, and sustainability. You know what sustainability mean, little girl? You know, tell me if you know what sustainability mean. Not really. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it means, sir, you have to keep working hard if you make sure you keep up the grid. You are ready for Glenmuir? I guess so. You guess so. You know we have to work hard. You know what principal say? What she did? I don't see her. She call. <laughs> you know what she say? She want great things. And she want Glenmuir to have academic achievements. So what are you going to do? Tell me what you're going to do. Try to work hard. Try? Why try? Tell me what you're going to do again. 
Work hard. Work hard to achieve what? To achieve what? Create, um, achieve valor, success, and sustainability. <laughs> All right, mama. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, give them a bow. All right. So at the end, we'll see who gets a token by your loudest applause. Group two, who is coming next? Punching that little fella. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they caught us off guard. <laughs> All right, so, ready? Just repeat, freestyle, eh? Flag on to say. say flag on to say. We say, flag on to say. Flag on to say. Flag on to say. So we flag on to say. What you gonna do this year? Work hard. You sure? Yeah, me sure. You sure, sure, sure. Me sure, sure, sure. Me say burning with the seal. Burning with the seal. Burning with the seal. Burning with the seal. What you expect from the teachers? Hmm. What hmm. do I expect from the teachers? Good question. What I expect is a good learning experience and have fun while I'm at it as well. That's right. So we say, everybody, flag on to say. Flag on to say. We say, flag on to say. Flag on to say. Burning with the seal for <laughs> truth, my alma mater. Blessings to everyone. <laughs> All right. Remember, we have others in the in the in the lineup, you know. But um, that was a big, a very huge applause. But let's see if the third group will take it home or take it to the sea. <laughs> Um, a pleasant good day. <laughs> um, my name is Gayam Black, and I'll be acting um, the principal speech. All right, so <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so our skit, I'll be acting the principal. It's okay, so hi. I realize that you're a past PEP student, and I am Dr. Marshall Smallin, <laughs> the principal of Glenmore High. I would just like to know what are your expectations as a new student entering the Glenmore family? Well, Miss, I have a lot of expectations. I want, I'm here to learn new stuff. To get to know the place, to get to know new people, and just to do that, and just be me, Miss. Okay, <laughs> that's acceptable. <laughs> it's important to be yourself, right? Who is coming next? Punching out a little fella. Good morning, Jaden. Good morning, Sir Thomas. Did you study for your exam? Yes, sir. Sit. Sit. Quickly. <laughs> Raise your pen. Uh, no pen. Here. Thank you, sir. This is Glenmuir High School, one of the best schools in the country and by the world. You're supposed to bring a pen to your exam. Okay? Yes, Begin. Sir. Five minutes left. Time up, finish, 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 give me. <laughs> How did you feel about the exam? Uh, it was very hard. Hard. Oh, no study, huh? Uh, you did well, 95%. Give yourself, give me my hand, please. What are your expectations about Glenmore High School? To study well and to uh, achieve many goals. Are you at the best school in the country? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You didn't sound confident. Say it again loudly. Yes. Say this is the best school. This is the best school. Thank you.
right, give it up for this daddy O. <laughs> Thank you for participating. Thank you. But guess what? Do we have a winner? Who? Who is left? They shied away? Guess what? You shouldn't have because... Oh, come back, please, daddy. All of you are winners. Yes. Everyone, once you step foot through that gate, you are already a... Say, I am a... Excellent. Come at right here and line up. Mrs. Hamilton White. White Hamilton. In her red, will share with you tokens of appreciation. Give them a round of applause for participating. Didn't they do well? With 60 seconds to prepare. Can you imagine if they had more time? And as they receive their tokens of appreciation, I now invite to do the memoirs of grade seven, Nathan Hewitt of form 1G, that's my form, Najee Dawkins of 1N, and Chrisana McLean of form 1M. Please come forward. So you listen keenly, they're going to share with you All right, so Nathan, please stay at the podium first. Mm -hmm. Then Najee will come next, followed by Chrisana McLean. Good morning, Glenmuir. Good morning. My name is Nathan Hewitt, and it gives me great pleasure today to stand in front of you all, share my experience with you as a first former. So, so the transition from prep school to high school, it wasn't so easy because I had to switch from four subjects to 14 different subjects. Could you believe that? Very overwhelming. And especially coming after the, out of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was, oh sorry, it was very hard, but, uh, but it was manageable. And, and in, and in these types of situations, we would need the critical support of our parents. And parents, this message is for you. Remember, the wrong things said at the wrong times can derail a child's confidence and self-esteem and has the potential to have devastating effects on their future. So that's why you have to encourage them all the way. Now students, you have to settle down in the school because it's not so easy and it's not so hard, but I'd encourage you to make some new friends, help you motivate you, perform at your best, and you will also have assessments every six weeks. It takes a lot of studying, you know, <laughs> but it helps to keep your information, you know, so you can and now most of you who say, oh, I don't want to study so much, you know, because I want to play my Roblox, my Minecraft, stuff like that. Well, y it's okay for you to have your free time, but just remember that studying always comes first. And yes, you may not like it, but trust me, it's for the best. Um, so this is my motivational speech to you guys. Welcome to Glenmere at this noble institution, thank you. Good morning, Glenmere High School. As a past student of Denby Primary, I always wondered what it was like to be here, what it was like to be at the hub of excellency. When I got here, I was very flustered and hardly spoke in class very much, even though at primary school I was a chatterbox, <laughs> to be honest. When I came here, I came here with high grades, right? But it was only in four subjects. Whenever, when I saw 14 subjects, 12 examinable subjects, I was like, how am I going to do this? My mother came to me and said, Najee, how are you going to pass all your exams? How are you going to do this? My mother said, no games throughout the week, only on Saturdays, Fridays, and you have to finish your work. 
So whenever you're coming here, you have to work hard. You have to be determined in what you do. You can't come here with a half-hearted mindset to go like, I'm going to come here, I'm not going to study. You have to study hard, work harder, and also you have to keep close attention to your extracurriculums. And also, this school is very special. It has a way of bringing out the best in you. For me, I never had any, any extra curriculum at primary school, but when I got here, there was a lot of extra curriculums, but the one that draw to me is chess. And I did chess, right? And there was a daily Bartley tournament. I came second in that tournament. I never thought I would. I um, thank God I did. And remember, everybody, keep God in your life. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. All protocols observed. My first form year at Glenmuir High School marked a significant milestone in my educational journey. It was a year filled with both challenges and exciting experiences that shaped me academically and personally. The initial adjustments to a new school seemed daunting due to its size, but I quickly discovered the value of diversity when I started interacting with students from diverse backgrounds. Building meaningful friendships helped me feel a sense of belonging and provided me valuable support during the transition period. One of the most notable, noticeable changes compared to my previous years in primary school was a substantial increase in subjects going from four to 14. This cause, this change brought about a greater number of teacher interactions and a heavier workload with numerous homework assignments and assessments. The introduction of six weekly assignments, assessments sorry, added further pressure, recognizing the importance of checking the Google Classroom regularly and revisiting my notes frequently became essential to achieve my desired test scores. Moreover, I began exploring my interests beyond the classroom. I joined a math and science club, actively participated in chess club, and developed a new skill in playing chess. First form served as a time of self-discovery allowing me to understand my passions, strengths, and areas for improvement. Engaging in self-analysis enabled me to identify my interests and establish personal and academic growth goals. Navigating the new school environment, embracing academic challenges, exploring extracurricular activities, and building social connections all played a pivotal role in shaping my character and mindset. As I progress in my educational journey, I carry with me the invaluable experiences and cherished moments of my first form year. I am forever grateful for the opportunities it has provided me to develop in, into a more confident and well-rounded individual. Thus, my advice to those embarking on their Glenmuir journey is to make friends, engage in clubs and extracurricular activities, Heed the guidance of your teachers, and most importantly, remain focused on your educational pursuits. In the words of Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I thank you. Stay put, stay put. A round of applause for them. Do you know how much effort it takes to be here? This one spoke from his heart, this one did not use a script, and this one, young miss, she spoke so elegantly. Ambassadors, right? Very well, very well. And thank you, gentlemen. Isn't it lovely to see our young men? Yes. Riding the waves, surfing. Yes. Very well. Um, sir, guest speaker, what do you think? Next five years. They'll be here, right? Encourage them, encourage them. All right, so they're well clad in their Glenmere High School uniforms. And at this point, we're very proud when we see color red. Oh, it's maroon, thank you. Miss Charmaine Holmes will now come to do the pride of the uniform. Please welcome Miss Polished, Miss Intelligent. <laughs> And Miss Poised, Charmaine Holmes. Shh, you have to clap very silently. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my former student. Thank you. 
A flagrant and multi waves morning to you all. A very special shout out to the prospective Glenmuir High School first formers. We here at the, we here at the Hub of Excellence pride ourselves on our mode of dressing. We will be showcasing a few of the uniforms that you will be wearing in the upcoming September and going forward. Please look at the first model, Justin. Justin is wearing a brown khaki shirt with no undershirt showing. This is teamed with brown khaki pants. The sleeves are short above his elbows and not cuffed. A maroon tie is worn as also a brown belt. The leg of his pants are not cuffed and they are right above his shoes. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Okay, all right. So this is Justin, all right. Notice parents that, notice parents that his pants legs are not taken in, neither are they cuffed. His hair is neatly groomed and let me specify the ties. Parents, please ask your sons to wash their ties so that they are tidy and gives a good appearance overall. Thank you, Justin. Good up. Following Justin is Tamari. Tamari has on a maroon tunic with four boxed pleats. She has on a Peter Pan color blouse teamed with white socks and a black shoes. Her dress is four inches below her knee. She has on a buckled belt. If you look at her hair, she has in no beads. Parents, no beads, no extensions, no piecing of hair, no coloring. No jewelry, no earring, no ring. I'm not seeing a little ribbon, but I'll take the little baby ribbons. I'll take them, spin around. Yes, yeah, spin. Neatly done, neatly done. Her socks, two inches above her shoes. Notice no tennis socks. And her black shoes is polished. All right, so that's, that's Tamari. Following Tamari is another one of the uniforms. I have my models, Amla and Natalie. They are wearing a, what we call an apron with a hat that they use when they are cooking their little rock buns and when they are baking their cakes. Uh, thank you, girls. Step back. Uh. Followed, I have my PE, my PE girls. Uh, my boys coming after. So, all right, wait, my young man. The girls have on a white blouse that is piped with burgundy, a pleated skirt, white socks, um, tennis shoes, or crepe, spin around girls. Yes, neatly pleated. We ask the parents to teach your young girls to pleat their skirts, and that is teamed with bloomers or shorts that is worn underneath. Okay, girls, spin again. Thank you, girls. Step back. Now, the lone gentleman he 
has on his PE shirt, his shorts, white tennis shoes, and his socks. And um, the PE gears will be available at the PE rooms after. All right? Renella. Now, the students do visual arts. Now, so as not to get their clothes dirty, Renella has on a white coat, or it may be blue. Um, spin around. All right. So this will have them not putting on the paint on their uniforms. Come forward, Justin. Come forward. Come forward. Note, parents, this is what we would like to see come September. All right, you can come up, Justin. You can go, Justin. Come on. Then, Tamari, note, note, parents, below the knees, not above. Thank you, Tamari. Come, my bakers. These are my bakers. All right. Thank you, girls. These are my future netballers. Thank you, girls. Thank you, my footballer. Thank you. And last but not least, my beautiful VA student. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Holmes. And as we roll along, Surf along, I now invite right, Mrs. Meikle, teacher of history, and she will be walking us through the symbolic presentation of the six core values. And if you look to my left and to your right, you see them posted right there. Thank you so much. Good day, everyone. Oh no, let's go again. Good day, Glenmuir family. I know that you have been sitting for a little while, so I'm gonna ask you just to stand. Everybody just shift your position, stand, stretch, and sit back down. Let's do that in two seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Daddy may never say yawn, you know. Boy, I see, I see a father, the one big yawn. Please don't go to sleep. Please don't go to sleep. So now we're going to have So we are at the symbolic presentation of our six core values. And as Miss Mullins pointed out, they are well displayed in the auditorium, three on one side, three on the other. Our core values are represented in our school flag by six diamonds which perch above the flagrant's flame on our school flag. And that just emphasizes that when our students come in, we expect them to leave demonstrating these values. So parents, please note them. Help us to reinforce them at home. This morning, we have six teachers who will represent each value, and we're going to get right into it. Our first and probably most prized value, citizenship, represented this morning by Ms. Zania Hall, past student, class of 2009, currently a fourth form form teacher, and she insisted that I tell you that she was a former, well, is a former basketballer for the school, representing our value of citizenship. At Glenmuir, we take very seriously our mission to, under God, mold these young children, your children, these young citizens, to become the model citizens that Jamaica will need. Citizens 
that will stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace. Miss Zania Hall, walking symbolically with the flame of citizenship, our number one core value. Representing responsibility, Mr. Jamoy Randall, please come, sir. Another past student, class of 2013, a former quiz member, and he continues in that vein to coach our quiz teams. Notice I said teams. Representing the core value of responsibility. At Glenmuir, we encourage our children to take responsibility for themselves, to take charge of their behavior, to take charge of their possessions, and to ensure that their excellence becomes their business. Responsibility, our second core value. Trustworthiness, trustworthiness. Mrs. Janice Corniff Williams is bringing that value in. She's a first form coordinator, one of the nicest, sweetest teachers you will find. What do we mean by trustworthiness? Little ones, your word must be trusted. We expect to see honesty. We expect that you're going to seek truth. And if in seeking that truth, you're the only one in the class standing up for it, we expect you to do so. Trustworthiness, our third core value at Glenmuir. And then at this noble institution, we value caring caring. Mrs. Denisha Peterson Burke, another past student, class of 2001, will bring that light. We take care of each other at Glenmuir. Everyone is equal. We look out for those who are weak, those who are a little slower than the others, and we pull everybody along. We promote kindness, empathy, and service to others. Caring and love is what we do. We encourage you, little ones, you're going to be in classes with 40, plenty other students. Care for each other. Love each other. And guess what? First formers, you're going to be in the same class all the way up to fifth form. You're going to be a family. So begin by loving each other. Thank you so much, teacher. Our fifth core value, respect. Represented this morning by Mrs. K. White Hamilton, head of the geography department and so many other hats she wears at Glenmuir. Respect. We have to acknowledge that each of us has a right to be here. We have a right to be here. We're going to respect our school symbols. You're going to respect yourselves, first formers. You're going to respect the parents that you represent every day at school. Everything you do, it will reflect your parents. Did you notice how similar the children who came up here earlier looked like their parents? The behaviors were almost identical. Did you notice? Was I the only one who noticed? So we're going to come and we're going to respect each other, our teachers, our leaders, each other and ourselves. Our last core value, fairness. Miss Kay Anna Thomas, currently a first form teacher and member of the history department. She walks with that candle. The candle reflects the fact that as we go through, there are things that are going to happen sometimes. As we say in Jamaica, what does Jaka say? That what? The ground no level. 
But I guarantee you, parents, that we do make a valiant effort to be fair to every student. Every student has an equal right to be here, regardless of race, regardless of academic ability. Every student has a right to be here. So we try to be fair and we ask that you work with us to make sure that your child has the best experience here. The six core values of Glenmuir High School. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. It is my pleasure to move right into our torch ceremony. This is a very exciting part of the orientation this morning. Our motto, Flagrance Veritati Studio, the flagrance in it stands for burning. We are people of light. We do not double in darkness. And we know and we believe that each of us was created in our parents' womb and light was put in us. And so, as our torchbearers move towards the back, let me quickly tell you a little bit about them. Before we go any further, I'm asking you, PEP students, not to play with the candles, just hold them. Don't flick them on and off yet. We will tell you when you do the flick on. So our torchbearers, our chief torchbearer this morning is Mrs. Monacea Williams, a proud alumna of this noble institution which she entered in 1964. And immediately upon entry, she understood the assignment, the assignment of being a model student as she was selected head girl in 1970. Years later, she became a model educator, moving through the ranks of form teacher, then grade coordinator, then on to being head of the science department, vice principal, and finally our first female principal from September 2009 to 2013. Mrs. Monacea Williams, class of 1969. Our second torchbearer, Max Leiber. In 2017, Foundation Preparatory School sent their top student, Max Leiber. He was our matriculant, and it is our delight that six years later, he's again our top student. An extraordinary scholar, Max gained 10 grade ones in CXC in 2022 and he's currently awaiting his Cape Unit 1 results. You want to bet what those grades are going to be? He's very strongly involved in extracurricular activities, a very rounded student. And finally, our matriculant for this year, Abigail Atkins, top pair performer from Denby High School. She tells me that her favorite subject is language art. She speaks very eloquently. She's a reader and a singer, so we have a new member of the Glenmuir High School Choir. And now, we will watch the symbolism of members of our cadet corps bringing in the flagrant torch.
The Glenmuir experience epitomizes passion, zeal, creativity, determination, persistence, a strong belief and reliance on God and hard work, which blossoms into a rich legacy of excellence. This ceremonial lighting and passing of the torch is symbolic of our unquenchable strength and courage to, con to continuously keep the flagrant flame of excellence ablaze. Our chief torchbearer, Mrs. Williams, will now give her charge. Uh, you know, I tried to do the left, right of the, the cadets. <clears throat> And I realized that I was almost falling down, so I gave up. <clears throat> it is an honor to be here this morning. And for those of you who are not mathematically inclined, this particular point in time marks 59 and a half years that I have been associated with Glenmuir. And, and I'm, I'm glad God gave me the opportunity to live this long so I could be here this morning. And I'm charging Max <clears throat> that in 30 years' time, he must be the guest speaker for prize giving. Not graduation, prize giving. You all know prize giving is my thing. And I, I didn't like that it was not mentioned this morning. But prize giving is my thing because that's when you celebrate your achievements. <clears throat> and I don't know why Satan doesn't want me to speak this morning. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> but one of the things that you must learn about Glenmuir parents, because it is what makes Glenmuir what it is. Glenmuir levels the playing field for all students. And what do I mean by that? That when you get through the gate, it doesn't matter whether you came in a Benz or you came on a bicycle, the treatment that you get is the same. You are treated based on how you are once you put on that uniform. So if you're hardworking, you're as old time people say, manazable, then you are good to go. It doesn't matter if you go away every year for your vacation or you can't even find the bus fare to come to Maypen. You are treated just the same. The one who is ignored and treated badly is the one that doesn't have any manners. And is the one that who's not doing any work. But once you do everything that everybody has said so far, you will succeed. And I've seen it happen over and over again. Last week, Sunday, the entire page two of the, day of the Sunday Gleaner was devoted to Steve Rodriguez. You know one of the things he said? He said that he did not even realize that where he was living was captured, not bought, not paid for, but captured by his parents. And Stephen now works with UNIA and travels all over the world. He's now in Afghanistan. That is what you become when you get to Glenmuir. You're no longer a promise but you are a possibility. And every potential that you have, you're allowed to exercise them and achieve them. I saw one little boy from Rock River. Can I tell you that one of our head boys was from Rock River Primary? And there was another one from Frankfield. One of our deputy head boys was from Frankfield Primary. So the world is before you and let, what our principal there? Richmond Park Primary, right? 
and I am from way up in the hills, Mount Carmel Primary and all age. So what is possible? Anything that God wants you to be is possible. And Glen Muir was named the number one school in the island because it leveled the playing field for every single student that enters through its gate. So my charge to you, the class of 2028 is don't spoil it. Keep it that way. Max, I know you will do great things. I know you will continue to do great things because, and I must say this, because you have a very supportive mother. And before I forget, the PTA, if you want to know what a supportive parent should be like, invite Mrs. Nelson to come and speak with you. She supported Stephen even when he did not know that she was supporting him. Parents, that's my charge to you. Support them even when they do not know that you're supporting them. So Max, 30 years from now, guest speaker, prize giving. Good morning. I, Max Leiber, on behalf of the current students of the Hub of Excellence, welcome you to this new leg of your academic journey and charge you to uphold all the great qualities we revere. Do so courageously and with all your heart, knowing that we stand ready to support you. Take this flagrant flame of excellence and keep it burning. Good morning, everyone. I, Abigail, on behalf of my peers, accept the flagrant flame of excellence with supreme pride. It is our avowed intent to consciously build on the rich legacy of Glenmere High School by embracing its vision, mission, and core values. We further pledge that we will represent the flagrant brand in everything we do and wherever we go, always deporting ourselves at the highest standards demonstrating our passion for learning and excellence in academics, co-curricular activities, and citizenship. Class of 2028. This little light of mine. Ah. Class of 2028. This very special class that will actually be graduating when we celebrate Glenmuir 70. We charge you to keep the flagrant flame of excellence ablaze always. And may your every thought and action represent the light of pride, loyalty, honesty, and perseverance, which thousands of students who entered this school before you have demonstrated. We invite you now to ignite your flame and may it always shine brightly. At this point, Little ones, we're going to ask you to just flick the switch once and turn your candle on. And you are going to hold your candles up. This Make this a moment you'll remember. I'm gonna let it shine. This 
Wasn't that exciting? Give them a hand. They did very well, very well. Thank you, Lady of Elegance, Mrs. Miko. All right, so as the members of the choir take their position on stage, I just want to say thank you to the decor team, the planners of this annual event. Give your, put your hands together and give them a round of applause for this ceremony. Thank you to our class of 2028. That's you, PEP students. Put your hands together for yourselves and your parents who really prepared you well for such a time as this. Please repeat after me. I am braver than I believe. No, you weren't listening. Okay. Let's go again. I am braver than I believe. I am stronger than I seem. I am smarter than I think. Do you believe that? All right. Awesome. And I have to squeeze this in as a geographer. The purpose of waves is to transfer energy from one place to another. And through that, <laughs> and through that, through that torch lighting ceremony, that's what we did. Right? So we're letting the waves roll, Mr. Nelson. We're creating the waves. And I'm sure, did you hear the sound? 
swish, swash, swish, swash, swishy, swashy, swish, splash. Did, it, did you hear the waves? No, you, you know, come on, man. Some of us were in our two pieces at, at the beach side. Where are you, at Sandals Resort? At the North Coast, <laughs> Mrs. Middle? So some of us will be the constructive waves. And hopefully no one will be the destructive waves because we're all here to build on the value that we have created at the Glenmuir High School. Which wave will you be? Constructive wave or the destructive waves? So we all choose to be the constructive waves. Life is a series of waves to be embraced and overcome. Success comes in waves. And let us leave with this in mind. Psalm 89 verse 9. You rule the swelling of the sea. When its waves rise, who will still the waves? You will still the waves. Job 38 verse 11 reads, And I said, Thus far you shall come, but no further. So when the waves of life arise through storms, you're going to say, Peace be still, waves be still, come no further. Do not fear me, declares the Lord. Do not tremble in my presence, for I have placed the sand as a boundary for the sea. Have you ever wondered how the waves or the sea can come no further? They are contained, an eternal decree, so it cannot cross it. Though the waves toss, yet they cannot prevail over your lives. Because the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the ruler of our lives. Though they roar, yet they cannot cross it. I'm yours truly, Miss Fiona Mullings. And as I depart, just remember these few announcements. Please collect your packages upstairs and Miss Holmes will take you in batches of 20. Take your PEP results and your payment right upstairs 6b and remember our summer school ad when school's out school's back in so join our summer school program give yourselves a round of applause for being real glenmuir high school students Right, so I don't want for us to be finished and not introduce you to Dominic Borising. Dominic was our first PEP matriculant in 2018. And the sustainability we are speaking about, he graduated last week with academic honors, was a part of the quiz program, and is a member of our track and field team and continues to do well. And he is a Christian. Okay, so put your hands together for Dominic. Thank you, Dr. Smalling. Can I get a praise the Lord? God is good. And all the time, God is excellent. Thank him for life. And please feast your eyes on stage for the world-renowned Glenmuir High School Choir. Give them a hand.
Thank you very much to the Glenmuir High School Choir. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Consistent, hardworking throughout the entire year, every function they perform. All right, so for the persons who are interested in summer school, please meet Mrs. Peter King on the outside. Thank you. Oh, please be seated. Um, parents, just a minute, please. Just, just still stand where you are. Just still stay where you are. Good afternoon. The name is Denavon Hills. Um, it's so good to see you. But we are doing the packages according to the numbers that you got at the gate. So we don't want the confusion where we have 50, 60, 70 persons standing up waiting to be served. All right? So just please remain seated. We are going to go by numbers. Um, I think we're going to be taking from 1 through to 21st. And then we move along nicely, all right? So please don't go upstairs and crowd upstairs. All right, just please, just be seated and we will call you according to the number that you got, all right? Um, there are some persons up there now, so we're just gonna clear, clear those and then we'll, we'll proceed to um, call your number, all right? Please you have your number, are your numbers ready so that we can serve you accordingly, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> 